time I can feel that burning deep inside Gonna give it all I am Gotta feel that power in my head The beat of the drums rushing through my skin Times for the Giants right now. Whole new culture. Fans back in the arena. This is a team that's going to be incredibly difficult to beat tonight. The Rocks have re-upped with some serious talent. They're having fun. Their key players are having big games. Oh and what a jam from Jock Dominic! Not just the best, but the best that you ever see. Oh, oh, oh. Oh. Armstrong looking to push. Armstrong with the alley Come on, the three. We're live from the National Basketball Performance Center in Manchester, where the Giants host the Glasgow Rocks tonight. These are two exciting teams to watch, and both very much hoping to challenge the BBL hierarchy for honors this season. Welcome to Friday Night Basketball here on Sky Sports. Good to have you with us for what promises to be an intriguing matchup. Two BBL legends alongside me as ever. Drew Lasker and Kieran Achara. And Kieran, apparently Drew and I have missed the memo for Christmas jumper day. Well, if you didn't mute my notifications, <laughs> you'd have seen <laughs> we were all meant to be dressed in the same today. We were you, all meant to be dressed. you bring the hat as well, as if I needed anything that makes you taller than me. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I need those couple inches to be up with Dan Clark tonight. <laughs> We've got to get our Christmas jumper A game on next week, uh, Drew Lasker, that is for sure. These two teams tonight, is it fair to say they are the two most improved teams in the BBL year on year? Yeah, absolutely. Just look at the turnaround. Last year, both of these teams were at the bottom of the barrel. Now they both have an opportunity to actually compete for some silverware. Is that the objective for them both, silverware this season, Kim? Oh, definitely. This week alone, they're, 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 one of them's going to be in a cup final. But they're definitely a top four uh, caliber teams this year. Very competitive, but definitely competing for both the trophy and for the cup. The Rocks have got quite a favorable draw in the trophy, don't they? I, I'm not going to jinx it in this time, <laughs> of but course. yeah, it's very, wise. <laughs> very wise. Well, speaking of the cup, of course, these two playing each other again this Sunday in the cup semi final first, like the second leg on Wednesday night, which means the three of them, you do the maths, will be playing three times in a week. The other game in the championship tonight, the Newcastle Eagles taking on the Bristol Flyers in the league. If we look at the league table, the 5-0 Leicester Riders remain the only unbeaten side in the championship. The champions, of course, looking to retain their title. The Sheffield Sharks looking solid, only two losses after seven games. Newcastle on the up as well, which certainly is putting a smile on Drew's face. Two superb victories last weekend. We saw them in front of our own cameras against London, and they then had a triple overtime win on the road in Cheshire. The Giants were there four and three after their seven games. Glasgow in a similar position, three wins out of five. As I said, the two have played each other three times this season because they were drawn in the cup group, and it was a blowout win for each team and a narrowish win for the Rocks when you look at those three matchups. So, Drew, there's not really much to choose between these two, is there? Yeah, definitely not. I mean, it's it, it, it's the fourth matchup, and usually when you play a team four times, it becomes about those little intricacies and those little, let's see if, we, if those little adjustments. Let's look at the Giants in a bit more detail, first of all, tonight then. It's a really interesting dynamic about this Manchester team this season because they've had some huge signings. They very much plan to grow the fan base. They feel like a franchise on the up and up. Martavius McKnight, he's had a serious uh, impact in the backcourt, one of their US imports. Of course, the addition of Team GB captain Dan Clark has caused the biggest stir uh, this offseason. Jamel Anderson, he came in from the title-winning riders. He adds really strong presence at both ends of the floor. Josh Steele, former GB junior, he started in every game for them this season. Francois Lewis, another American addition. Tyreek Armstrong as well, the guard, proving to be one of the league's most exciting 
and watchable players. But it was the signing of Dan Clark that was the biggest coup for the Giants. And Kieran came down to Manchester recently to see his old Team GB teammate and find out a little bit more about the man and the move. They don't get much bigger than Dan Clark. His call, he jams it home. Like and I'm three. sure on the scout report, it's underlined, it's in bold, it's in italics. <laughs> Do not leave Dan Clark open. So Dan, honestly, thank you for joining me here today in Manchester. Great to see you back in the BBL. You know, I guess we get started to just kind of, your reasons for coming back. It's good to see you as always. I'm still excited about being back. The main reasons really was I've looked to quite actively, I'd say, to play back in the UK. It's been a dream of mine. It's just about finding the right situation. You know, I think here in Manchester with Lloyd and, and with Jamie and with the project they're, they're putting together, and it was very interesting to me, not just for my basketball career, but for what could come after basketball. It's offered me great opportunities in terms of you know, getting back into the studying, being back in the UK, you know, experiencing the British culture again, which has been a brand new thing for me, you know, being so many years in Spain. So far, I'm loving it. Um, the team's doing well so far on the court. I think the performances have been generally very positive and, you know, so there's not much to complain about so far. You know, and you know I like to complain sometimes, <laughs> so there's quite a few things. Can you tell me what, what you actually are studying and, yes, and how, you, how are you finding uh, that, balancing that with your basketball? So I've signed up for a Masters at Manchester Metropolitan University in Sport and Business Management. This will probably be one of the biggest challenges I've had as an adult, but it's also one I'm really excited about. I've started you know, two or three months ago now, so I'm just trying to get find my way around it still, find my way around the library, find my way around the... The business school at Manchester Met. It's a challenge, but you know, challenge is always good. That's brilliant. That's brilliant to hear. Obviously, you've been playing basketball for a long time now, but you no, know, let's take it a wee bit back, uh, back to your playing days in, in Spain. You were 14 when you first went across. Can you tell me a little bit about your experiences out in Spain and just a couple of the highs and lows that you experienced when you were over there? Yeah, I mean, it's been an unbelievable journey. And nowadays, in the current world, they're comparing like European routes and the US routes for kids. And the route I've been down, I wouldn't change it for anything in the world. It is a professional setup from when you're 14. You know, there is a program for your diet. There's a program for your strength and conditioning program. There's, you know, obviously your basketball session and stuff like that. And without knowing it, when you're 14, you're a full-blooded professional and you know and, it's just, and then it just becomes normal there's no real transition needed when you are ready as a player i remember speaking to you once at gb camp and sometimes you'd start talking to me in spanish <laughs> you talked about sometimes you used to dream in spanish yeah now you've been back in the uk for a little bit is that are you still dreaming in spanish at all i would say now and again obviously my partner's spanish i've got to keep the spanish <laughs> lingo up to, to keep hold of it kind of thing i mean when i'm in spain it is just full-time Spanish speaking kind of thing, so I just tend to like drift off or daydream or even dream at night. <laughs> in a bit it's of like when I'm in Scotland, I feel, feel Scottish. Yeah, you know? I can imagine. Yeah. <laughs> you know, what, what was probably your highest, you know, the highest high when, when you were in, when playing in Spain? It's tough to put, you know, your finger on a couple of moments. I, obviously, I played at a team called Estudiantes, which is like the crosstown rival of Real Madrid. It's kind of like if you imagine the football world, Atletico Madrid versus Real Madrid. So that game was the one game in the calendar that was highlighted every year. Like, that's the game. If you win that game, you know, the president's going to be happy, the coach is happy, he's got his job for another year kind of thing. It was when uh, Messina was there and a few other, you know, high-level European guys were there on the team, as they always have, and we beat them in overtime and, made, and I made the... The game went in three, which was, you know, always memorable. I still get remembered about it. Now walking down the streets of Madrid, people stop me and go, oh, I remember your shot kind of thing, you know, and it was like 11, 12 years ago now. They're talking about GB. Miles Hessen, Tarek Phillip, Dan Clark with a long three, knocks it down. Was it 2009 first came into the squad? I remember it for the Eurobasket in, in Poland many caps ago. I look at your journey, and first and foremost, I'm so proud. Talk about your highlights mm. from a GB perspective, what would, what would they be? 2009 was obviously a huge highlight for me. It was a dream come true being able to make my senior debut. You know, having come through the, like the junior ranks of the, of the GB system, which is always a great experience in itself, to be able to make that debut against Poland, it was extremely special to me and my family. You know, they're obviously having mum having played for the national team and dad having coached it was also quite significant for them as well so that was a really big moment something that I'm with a, I've still got the shirt from that game and still very proud of the day I mean I was speaking to Gabe about it last camp you know it's really you just feel proud when the young guys do so well even though they you know it's off their own bat and everything like that but it's just great to see them coming through and doing so well and you're getting ready to play Glasgow against my, my beloved Glasgow Rocks <laughs> tell us a little bit more about that that matchup and what, what, what to expect from that game it's fair to say we know each other quite well. Gareth's done a great job. 
you know, signing guys, you know, obviously with Jordan, one of the best point guards in the league. He really runs their team, gets them going. You know, he's really their motor, I think, behind them winning or losing. And obviously with the experience with the Scottish guys and Ali and Gareth and, you know, Fraser coming off the bench doing this thing and obviously Johnny can't miss a shot at the moment, you know. So yeah, I think they've had a great start to the season. We've never had an easy game against them. It should be and it will be a really good game, I think. All right, Dan, thanks for your time today. Obviously, this is getting put out through the Glasgow game, so just want to say unlucky and better luck next time. Cheers. Appreciate it, Karen. Appreciate your time as always, but I think the Giants will win this one. Yeah. So. <laughs> Maintaining that journalistic integrity and lack of partisanship there, Kieran and Joe. I love that. Interesting what he said about waiting for the right opportunity to come home and, and that Manchester was the right fit, which suggests that it's an exciting time if you follow the Giants, right? Yeah, for sure. I mean, I, I was shocked. You know, I'm excited, but I was shocked when he, when he, when he signed with the Giants. But it just shows their ambition. You know, they're, they're really building something here. And it's great to see Dan really, really, uh, you know, excelling in his role. Something you talk to, uh, to me about a lot when talking about Dan Clark is how he improves everyone around him. Expand on that. Yeah, I mean, he's, he's got a great IQ. Uh, he's demanding as a player. But he tells you what, what spots to be in to be successful, and he delivers the passes to those spots. So he's like a, you know, he plays a point guard from a seven foot point guard at, at times. You know, the ball goes through his hands a lot of times. But if he gives the people the right kind of decision making, he makes it, their jobs a lot easier. And a player that is definitely benefiting from his presence is Jamel Anderson, Drew. How important is he to the Giants? How important in particular is his versatility? I mean, Jamel Anderson is like a Swiss Army knife. What you need, coach, defense? Okay, I'll guard one through four. If he's open, he'll knock down the open shot. But most importantly, what he brings is that winning mentality. He comes here with eight championships to this Manchester Giants franchise. Do you think he's one of the strongest defensive players in, in the league right now? Absolutely, because of his versatility, like we just mentioned. The coach can move him around, move him on different players. He's an asset to any team. Martavius McKnight is already establishing himself as one of the, the bigger characters in the BBL, I think it's fair to say, uh, and a hell of a player. But he had a tough time out last game against the Lions, Kieran, didn't he? Yeah, I was a little bit shocked because, you know, I, I think he's got a great rhythm to his game. He's very composed. Lions really kind of forced him. He went one of 11 shooting, no assists. So, I, like, I know he's got a great offensive game, but when he was sh shooking up with some of the best defence in the league, it really, really kind of showed. So I expect him to have a big game tonight. Tyree Armstrong from Houston, Texas, through your hometown. Sir. So you are rooting for him, of course. Cheshire had absolutely no answer for him when we saw him on Sky Sports a few weeks back. Yeah, absolutely. He's come in as a young rookie and earned these veterans respect by playing defense. One of the best defenders in the league when it comes to steals, top 10. And he's just a pest. He's always in your face picking guys up 94 feet. Now, Josh Steele, when we were talking about the roster earlier on, I mentioned he's been ever present for them this season. He's become a core part of this giant side. What's his core role in it, Kieran? He's just Mr. Consistent. He's shooting the ball really, really well. I, I'm still sad. We tried to sign him at Glasgow Rocks a few years back because I knew what he, what he was capable of doing. And I'm glad to see he's doing it now in the big stage of the Giants. So the Giants getting set. Next up, we're going to take a closer look at their opponents tonight, the Rocks, and find out, amongst other things, when it's crunch time, which player gets the ball. I think we've got a, a group of guys that can all take the last shot. Me, for sure. Uh, me, of course. And the question is that. The last shot to win the game, I'm putting the ball in JJ's hands. And like LeBron James, he's probably passing it to someone else. I'm taking the last shot. I've got that confidence. I'm taking the last shot.
We're in Manchester for Giants Rocks tonight. There's Team GB captain Dan Clark leading the Giants into an optimistic place right now. There are both of these teams, of course, in the Cup semi-final. So one of them, after Wednesday night's second leg, is going to be a BBL Cup finalist. And that is great news for Gareth Murray, the Rocks player coach, because Kieran last year, it was a real baptism of fire for him, wasn't it? This season, he's been able to strike more of a balance with the coaching playing challenge. But tonight is going to be a tougher ask. Yeah, I mean, I think he learned a lot from last season, but he got a chance to coach this season, you know, with a stronger stronger roster. But right now, they're missing a player in green. He's going to have to play more. So I'm really, really curious to see how that game goes tonight and how he kind of balances that playing coaching role. How has he approached the recruitment of re-upping this roster year on year? Because they were dead last in the BBL last year, last season, but this time around, much stronger. He went with pros this year, had more experience and a higher IQ. And that allowed him to do everything he wants to do. He, you know, he's an X and O's kind of player, so it's really, really allowed him to, to be an X and O's guy and a guy, and they can follow his lead. Some of the new faces include the American trio, JC Hillsman, Tyrell Green, he's injured tonight. Uh, Jordan Harris very much enjoying life in Glasgow right now, coming up goods on the court all season long. The skipper, Johnny Bunyan, uh, he is uh, on fire right now, uh, leading the BBL from the three-point range and a real vet, so ingrained in this organization. In America, Jordan Johnson, they have one of the best guards and indeed the most likable characters in the league right now. His contributions have put him in the early MVP conversation. Ali Fraser back at the Rocks as well. And Gareth Murray, as we said, able to balance his minutes a little bit more this season, but we expect to see a fair bit of him tonight. So let's get a little bit more up close and personal now and get into the Rocks locker room. Best player, I'm probably going to go with Jordan Johnson. Probably JJ Jordan Johnson. I'm going to go with Jordan Johnson. You know, he scores, he can pass, he's a very versatile guy. Yes, point guard, makes everything run, he runs the team. Just a very well-rounded player. Are we supposed to say somebody else? Or are we yeah, you say yourself. <laughs> <laughs> uh, best player on the team would probably be me, because I'm just that confident in myself. Best shooter, we got a lot of shooters, but I'll have to go with JB, Johnny, Johnny the sniper. Best shooter, Johnny Banya, number nine. Johnny, or well, I'm going with G. They shoot the mess out of that ball. Me, I'm the best shooter. Don't let anyone tell you any different. Best nickname, I'll go with Johnny Banya. Probably Banya, like JB, Bizzle. Johnny, JB, J Bizzle. The one and only. Bizzle, we Bizzle. Yeah. That's a great nickname. I think my first impressions of Coach is uh, he's, a, he's a hard worker, he's dedicated to his craft, and he, he just wants to make us better. He was a real stern dude when I first met him, like, just like, not, not really much emotion. As you meet him, he opened up a little bit. A good basketball, we shared the ball, we played good defense, we played team defense. Visually, you know, that beard got me, you know, it might call me weird, but I almost wanted to just grab it, you know, touch it. <laughs> <laughs> so I've known Gareth for a long time. I can't honestly remember what my first impressions were. Probably that I was intimidated or something. Literally, Gareth, well, Gareth will tell us one thing and I'm zoned out. And the next thing you know, we have to do it and I forget everything. And, you know, next thing you know, we're running. G, because he's the coach. <laughs> Gareth, the coach. Probably Gareth. Just the coach, he decides when he, when he wants us to do things. To be fair, no one. I, I think I think we all get along with everyone. I don't think there's anyone I would hate to sit beside. JC heals me for sure, because he talk too much sometimes. He got he have too much energy sometimes. I'm not hate. I don't have no conflicts. I'm cool with everybody. But if I had to pick someone, I'm gonna go with JC Hosman because he talks a lot. Nobody. I love everybody. I don't know. I, th I think we've got a, a group of guys that can all take the last shot. I, I don't think there's any any particular. One guy. Me. Michelle. Sure. Uh, me, of course. And the question is that I can do it all. Whatever you need, coach. Realistically, you know, I'm going to say, you know, we're going to probably call, you know, maybe JC to shoot the last shot, Jordan, Johnson. The last shot to win the game, I'm putting the ball in JJ's hands. And like LeBron James, he's probably passing it to someone else. Threes, pull up, lay up. I'm taking the last shot. Got that confidence. I'm taking the last shot. Kieran, you two go way back. Do you remember your first impression of Gareth Murray? 
I do. He was he was beardless, but still still very serious. With or without a beard, he's he's a, he's a serious character. I just can't imagine him without a beard. That's astonishing. Let's look at some of the new recruits in this exciting rock lineup. Starting with Jordan Johnson, who certainly doesn't lack confidence. This is the guy that very much makes the rocks offense tick, and you love the way he enhances everyone around him, Kieran. Yeah, definitely. And I, I was talking about this, you know, before the start of the show with with Drew. If you run the floor, he will reward you. You know, he he sets the tempo of the game because he he rewards his his, his players with his assist ability. So I, I think that's a real real strength for any team. Now, JC Hill's been another player we want to look at a little bit more closely since Mike Tuck, the Sheffield Sharks skipper, and part of our Sky Sports broadcast crew. Since Drew, he said he needed to prove himself. He's been on absolute fire, hasn't he? Yeah, he must have Sky Sports because since that comment, he's just gone on an average 18 and 9, which is above his averages. And he might not say it, so I say it for him. Take that, Mike Tuck. <laughs> <laughs> Jordan Harris, what does he bring to this Rocks lineup, Drew? Well, a team that's methodical and that likes to run their sets, he's the joker in the, in the deck. He's the high flyer. He brings athleticism and energy to this Rocks team. Do you think he's looks like he might be carrying an injury tonight, Kieran? Yeah, I was, I was watching him warm up. He's not strapped up in the yeah. knee. I think he's going to be touching the, 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 the rim with his head. <laughs> when Kieran Achara says he's carrying an injury, that means he's going to be flying. Johnny Bunyan, the skipper, in his 11th consecutive season in Glasgow. He's shooting nearly 55% from three-point range this season. That's the very best in the BBL right now. Yeah, he was a guy that we used to target when he first came in the league, and now to see him come out of the other side, one of the best shooters in the league, a great credit to Johnny Bunyan. Okay, a couple of keys to the game we want to talk about. Bench strength, first of all. Last time we saw Manchester, that was a key part of, of their victory. you think it's going to be crucial tonight? I think so. I think for the Rocks to have success tonight, they're going to have, especially in Saunders. Saunders and Whelan off the bench are really strength, really great shooters, bring a lot of energy. If you can slow them down, the Rocks have a chance. And the point guard matchup between Jordan Johnson and Tyree Armstrong, do you got your eye on that? A, a, a contrast of style. Johnson, strong, feisty, and you've got Armstrong, who's quick, and, and, and explosive, so we'll be able to see who battles out tonight. And tough as well, I'm yeah. sure. Let's not forget that. Right, uh, uh, Drew caught up with uh, both coaches a little bit earlier on to get their perspective, not just on this game, but the week ahead. Coach, are you happy with the performances so far this season, and what's the mood been in the camp this week? Um, up and down. I think, um, like most teams, some performances we're really proud of, some performances we would like to get back again. Um, mood this week has been good um last week a bit bit turbulent a bit up and down for us um with some covid issues and some stuff like that but yeah a lot better this week i think everybody happy to be together yeah good mood so far yeah i'm happy the way we're playing basketball we're, we're really scoring the ball well we're playing good um, exciting basketball and i'm pleased about that i'm pretty happy the way that we started and what's been the focus in training recently in order to maximize this group? Um, I think, you know, last time we were here, we talked defensive consistency, and that's, that's still the big thing for us right now. Um, I think at times we get it right and really pleased, like we said, with the performances. Other times it's, it's been a struggle. So just trying to maintain that defensive consistency throughout. Obviously a, a strange set of circumstances now for us, three games in a short period of time against the, the same team. So trying to kind of uh, psychologically get ready for that as well, the mental challenges that will come with it. It's our defence, especially our defence for sure. Uh, we can score the ball, got plenty of scores, but it's our defence that's really hurting us right now. Uh, I think we could have been in um, a little closer games or we could have increased the lead in some of the games if our defence was a bit better. And this is your fourth meeting this season between Manchester and Glasgow. What have you learned about them? Um... I think, you know, the, the keys for us, defensive transition, I think points in the paint to, to protect. You know, they, first two games, they got us a lot in transition. Thought it was something that they, they worked really well and, and was a big talking point for us. I thought game three that we won, uh, we did a lot better in that regard against them. So a big, big focus for us today. We know a lot, quite a lot about them. Everything goes through Dan Clark. We know that. Um, but they got some, some very good pieces of their, of their team. And uh, it's, it's going to be a whole team performance that's going to stop them tonight. And you play again Sunday in the Cup semi-final over two legs. Is this just a dress rehearsal? Uh, no, I think different competitions. I think it, we look at it as a playoff series more than anything. Um, obviously, you can't. It, it's not necessarily three wins or two wins. We, we don't know. But but right now, it's it's about today. It's about winning today because the league record is also important for us. And then we'll think about Sunday come tomorrow, and then you know try and figure out how to win that. Yeah, a little bit. It's a, it's still going to game, and we want to win. Uh, it's a league game. We still want to push up in the league. Uh, but it's a little bit of trying, a little bit of everything to uh, to see how we go on Monday, uh, Sunday and Wednesday.
we expect coaches to say that when asked a question like that. But how much is the semi-final going to be playing both on the coaches' minds and the players' minds? Right? Yeah, for the coach, they're playing the chess match, right? They're trying to make sure they don't show their hand. But when it comes to the players, you just go out there and there and compete. You're not really worried about tomorrow. What are the challenges? We heard it in that interview. The challenges that come with playing a team three times in a week. Well, firstly, have you made any adjustments? And are you paying attention to the details from the player's perspective? Because things might be a little bit tighter than what they normally are. So we'll be able to see who's actually blocked in tonight. OK, let's look at Manchester's form at the moment because they've been... Well, they've been in great form until they ran into the London Lions last time out. Absolutely blown away by the Lions. What went so wrong for them in that game, Kieran? You know, I think Coach Gardner talked about consistency defensively, but they were disrupted by London defensively. They've been shooting the ball really, really well. High scoring offense, they never got into any type of rhythm. The Rocks have also won four of their last five. They're only defeat a big one as well to the champions, Leicester. And they're putting up points, aren't they? 122 against Surrey, the Glasgow Rocks. 107 against Plymouth, almost a ton against Bristol as well. So year on year, this Glasgow offense is virtually unrecognizable. Yeah, but this year they're the second best offense in the league. But speaking of Gareth Murray earlier, all he kept harping on was defense, defense, defense. So it looked like both of these teams need to address the defensive side tonight. If we look at the head-to-head, -head, they're both strong offenses, as we've seen from that sample size and for the season as a whole. Both teams averaging 90 points plus this season. As Kieran mentioned a bit earlier on, match the league in the BBL in bench scoring so far this season. Does that give you a sense that Lloyd Gardner's got his whole roster, Kieran, to buy into his philosophy. Very much so, and it's, it's such a well-rounded uh, you know, roster. They, they just keep finding a way to, to put up points. If we look at the individual team leaders, we'll see the influence that Jordan Johnson has on this Rocks offense, leading points and assists. How do the Giants try and keep him in check tonight, Drew? Well, you got to make sure you neutralize him. He's the snake. you got to chop the head of the snake, and it's Jordan Johnson. Last time they did a good job of forcing 18 turnovers, and Tyreek Armstrong had a big deal with that. Two very closely matched teams, I think it's fair to say. Are you prepared to call this one either way, Jordan Johnson? The Rocks are going to win. No, no, no. <laughs> no, I'm, 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 no I'm, I, honestly, I think it's going to be a great, great game. I'm, I'm actually going to sit on the fence on this one. All right. The Rocks are going to win. First time I think I can imagine that. Uh, almost ready then here in Manchester for tip-off. Two of the most exciting teams to watch in the BBL right now. And in the Manchester camp, well, they're talking up a big game tonight. It's still like one of them days you want me to hit like seven or eight threes. Hey, I might not miss tonight. Oh, yeah.
So we're just about set for tip-off in Manchester. Very new look size this season for the Giants and the Rocks, and so far, so good. Carrying you through this one, Antro and Dan Ravage. Thank you very much, Nat. Yes, uh, episode four of what is at least a six-part mini-series between these two teams uh, this season. And with the Cup semi-final on the horizon, they'll want to get off to a good start. This is a very consistent starting five, the team that Lloyd normally goes with them. Yeah, Tarek Armstrong, number one, the point guard, the leader. Look for him to have a big game, but of course, that, 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 that pillar in the middle, Dan Clark, Mr. Security, Mr. Reliable. And looking at the Glasgow uh, lineup and the interesting one, Gareth Murray starting himself tonight. If you want something done well, do it yourself, and Gareth Murray can certainly do that. We've already seen him make some game-winning shots early already in the season. Well, two teams out and ready to go as the Manchester Giants and the Glasgow Rocks go head-to-head. -head. And we've talked about the Cup semi-final, but actually both these teams don't want another defeat in the uh, loss column in the league standings. Here's Clark for three. That was not quite close enough there, Fraser. You've got to close him out a little better than that. Here's Hillsman for three, and he knocks it down. Well, both teams following their natural behaviors. They don't close 90 points a game. Two possessions, two three-point shots taken. Yeah, the coach is talking about looking for improved defense, but we'll settle for high-octane offense that we've seen from both of these teams, and there's a great jam in transition. Good start for the Rocks. Very good start. Had a three-pointer in a run-in, fast transition dunk finished by Harris. Here's Clark again. Well, they got away with the first one. They're not getting away with leaving him with two open looks. You caught it, Dan. Unfortunately, Ali Frazier didn't hear you, and Dan Clark looks aggressive. He's looking for his shot and looking to score the ball early, which could be uh, could be danger sign for this Glasgow Rocks defense. Here's Johnson. Fraser throws it down low. Hillsman to the turnaround, has the shot blocked. That's a good defensive possession there. McKnight looked undersized, but he got the block. Well, he couldn't get the basket. He was trying to draw a foul, I think. Nice dish. And Fraser underneath finishes off the glass. That's a beautiful play there, just because Harris keeps his dribble alive. He didn't pick up the ball necessarily early, and what that did is it gave him options for Fraser rolling to the basket. Armstrong stops in the lane for two. This is a fast start to the game, Dan, and I don't know who it suits better because both teams like this, but Tari comes from another one joining the, uh, the, 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 the points party. Fraser. Pass just bubbled a second. Here's Hillsman for three, and he hits another. Even an offense like that wasn't very crisp. It looked uh, a little bit uh, bobbly at times, but results in a three-point make from the Glasgow Rocks. Well, the Rocks have made every shot so far. Here's McKnight. Gets it back. Gets to the mid-range, and he knocks it down. It's a really good sign, isn't it, for McKnight? Someone who's really struggled last game, one for 11. Didn't provide too much offensively, but a good early start for him. Nice pass from Murray. It's ripped away. Here come Giants in transition. Armstrong with a little floater. And this has been an explosive start. Drew Laska has joined us in commentary. We've seen a lot of offense. Both coaches told you about defense. All we've seen is offense so far. Yeah, this game has started off really exciting. A must win for both games. Two teams that have a high aspiration. But a loss suddenly sees a team fall at 500. Well, that's the thing. We talk about the cup, but actually the league, these losses early in the year... Come back to haunt you later on if you want to get to the upper positions in the standings. Here's Hillsman. Murray for a long three off the front of the iron. Steele driving hard. What a block that is. And a chance for Johnson to run. Johnson going hard. Drops it in and one. A block at one end from Harris, and a fast break from Johnson. Back-to-back -back plays, and it starts with defense. Who thought we would say that? Jordan Harris just chasing that ball down, and Jordan Johnson, the other end of the floor. We've seen it time and time again. 18 and a half points a game. What a finish.
And we talked about that at the top of the show with Jordan Harris in particular. He's the only guy on this Glasgow Rocks team that can make plays like that. Well, he missed the free throw, but somebody broke the lane. So they will get another go of that. Some men second time around. Glasgow with a little zone press down court. Armstrong lobs in, and Anderson with the flush. Well, that press just was a little bit passive, and Tariq Armstrong took full advantage of that. He attacked it, and what that did is create space for that high flying Jamal Anderson for the dunk finish. Fraser. Out to Murray. Harris driving hard to the hole. That's a tough finish. <laughs> it is, and that was just pure will and athleticism there for Jordan Harris. Positively imp impacting this game. Oh, leaves his man on the floor. Armstrong can't convert. <laughs> he was one make away from being in the top ten play there. We call that a million dollar move, two dollar finish. You got to finish that, Tyree. Come on. <laughs> Well, here's a look. Sends him sliding. Goes right past him. Everything but the finish. Oh, no one more than Hills will be happy to see that shot rim out. Well, he would have been seeing a lot of it on social media had that dropped in. <laughs> Absolutely. You see that look at the floor, too. Hey, there's this perspiration on the floor. <laughs> <Nah>. <laughs> Murray resets it to Fraser to the fall away. Bit of a Dan Clark shot over Dan Clark there. Armstrong. Anderson spinning baseline. Somehow gets the pass out to Steele, and there was a late whistle there. I think he got caught on the arm by Hillsman. That's a prime example of you don't have to be the quickest or the most out of athletic to play defense. You can play defense with your mind. Twice now, Jamal Anderson, who's a very talented offensive player, has attacked Gareth Murray, but Gareth Murray has stood his ground, he's moved his feet and made sure he's kept his body in between himself and the basket. And Jamal Anderson hasn't been able to score. Timeout called by the Glasgow Rocks here midway through the first quarter. They lead by four, but Gareth Murray wanting to talk it over and obviously this is the balance particularly early in the game where he's out on court at this stage normally he'd be if he comes off the bench he'd still be on the bench right now but he's got to think this is a bit more like last year yeah and, and Kieran touched on it at the top of the show there's no assistant coaches sitting over there so you know he has a, a big job on his hands not only having to produce as a player but also having to coach these guys up handle substitutions so it'll be very interesting on how he handles this job tonight well they certainly came out with a hot hand early on the Glasgow Rocks knocking down some long-range shots which helped them get out to that early lead The ball's moving early as well, which is a really good sign. You yes. know, there isn't uh, that, oh, we just had a long trip. You know, it's going to take us a little while to get into this game. You know, the ball seems to be zipping around. Players are moving. They're cutting for each other. And it looks really good. Yes, it's very early in the game, but you'd rather be you know, synchronizing earlier sooner rather than later. And I think you see the sense of urgency for both teams. They understand what's on the line. Like we talked about, you fought a 500. All of a sudden, you're in the middle of the pack. Big game tonight for both teams. as you would have seen from the league table at the start three and two the Giants four and three and four and four or three and three doesn't sound as impressive as uh, if they can get a win in the column bit of full court pressure here 
by the Manchester Giants. Harris provides the relief to get it across midcourt. Finally, Johnson gets his hands on it. Johnson driving in, drops the shoulder, offensive foul, the call. Yeah, you can see Jordan Johnson was really willing to get to that right side there off that screen, and Torrey Comstrand equally as quick there and gets to that spot. And we talked about the styles of play, Jordan Johnson trying to bully his way to the hole, but Tyreek Armstrong has the foot speed to be able to get in good position. Great defensive play. Here's Armstrong, back to Saunders, first shot of the game for him, he's good! Wow, Will Saunders, a guy that was really good in this fixture just a month ago. 21 points for him then, and I'm sure he'll be looking to inject the same damage tonight. Trying to apply at the other end is Hillsman, that's overcooked. Here's Saunders again, he passes it up, gives it to Steele instead. And his shot, I think, came off Anderson. Yes, it is a rocks ball. Well, interesting decision. It was, it was, it was selfless. It was, it was too unselfish there. I think, uh, you know, you catch that ball there with that, that amount of space. He stepped into it as well. I think Will Saunders will want that one back and shoot it because the first one looked really good. Which is surprising from Will Saunders because if you watch him over the course of the season, he comes in and he's not shy about letting that thing go. Well, he's only played 13 games uh, in his BBL career. That was his highest scoring one. Ball moves on to Murray who gets the shot away, rims out. Clark with the rebound. The Rock's missed on that case, but again, it looks good. Ball movement there, and you'd want that shot for Gareth Murray. Oh, Clark, don't help off him. Gareth Murray should know better than anybody else. Gareth Murray was the one who wrote the scout report. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Two spent a long time in the GB squad together, of course. Clark pulls that one off the rim. And that's an interesting matchup at the moment. Dan Clark, 6'10", six 6'11", six and you see Ali Frazier giving up size, and he's struggling to get his shot off so far in this game. Foul called as Steele went to the hole. Manchester definitely with the momentum right now. It's a nice pass. A little reach in from Harris. Steele at the line. I assume he's coming out as Whelan is sat ready to come in. And back to your point, Ant, I don't like the idea of Fraser trying to post up Dan Clark. He does it week in and week out. He's, he has some of the best footwork we see in our league, but you forget Dan Clark is 6'11". You want to get him outside the paint, away from the basket, to see if he can move his feet laterally. And Whelan does check in. Here's Harris. Harris going quick, slipping. And he's slipping because he was pushed. Jordan Whelan's first contribution in the game is a foul. Oh, good penetration here from Harris. Trying to, you see that right foot that just slid right on the floor. You know there's a lot of springs in those calves of his. And as soon as he gathers himself, it's just an explosive jump towards the rim. Gets the shot to wipe its feet. Second one is clean. He will sit down and Johnny Bunyan will come into the game for the first time. Good start for Harris. Six points personal. And we've got Johnny Bunyan now returning from injury. He was absent last game. We know what he can do. Certainly do. There's Whelan. Out to Anderson. Clark at the elbow. Shot clock getting low. Saunders resets, fires up. And off the front of the iron. Fraser with the rebound. Johnson. 
Johnson back to Murray for three, and he knocks it down. That's really good awareness from the point guard too. Gareth Murray didn't move, and Johnson just flings the ball over his shoulder there on the money. Gareth Morris, Murray finishes. Whelan to the fall away. Doesn't quite get the bounce, but it comes back to Saunders. Tough shot from Will Saunders. It was a good activity from him as well, crashing the offensive rebound and getting that nice little fadeaway jump shot. Round it goes to Bunyan. Bunyan down to Fraser with the spin. Lovely move from Ali Fraser. That's what he can do, but as you saw, he was a mismatch against Tyreek Armstrong, who is a good 5'10", if, if that. So Ali Frazier is able to fully take advantage of that matchup. And how did that matchup happen? Ali Frazier started out on a perimeter to get inside, as opposed to trying to post up on the block begging for the ball. That's how you score on Dan Clark. It's a great pass from Bunyan in the first place, but because of the switch on that that you talked about, he has a nice little match up down low and it's a lot harder than it looks as well you see the size difference there but if Ali Fraser uses his strength there and and, and, and bangs into Tori Armstrong all Tori Armstrong's got to do is, is fall back in his offensive foul but as you notice there he uses that dribble to spin the baseline gets which creates space there and he can really extend that right hand for the finish Jack Hudson gonna come in for Armstrong and look out for this lineup here. According to the stat guy on Instagram, this is their best five, a plus 46 across the season. See if they're able to push the lead up with this group. Well, it's minus two right now as Fraser goes in off the glass. Good hands to deflect it loose, but Giants keep possession. Here's Clark. Nice pass. Back to Clark, it's time he shoots. Off the mark, Murray with the rebound. Another good defensive possession there from the Rocks, making things a little bit more difficult now for this Giants offense. Here's Bunyan, moves it on. In the corner, the shot, Ooh, body hitting the deck there. It's Johnson, Giants come away with it. Fraser's able to deflect it away. A lot of discussion out there. As to what is and isn't a foul, that is the one upside of being a player coach. It's a lot easier to chat to the officials. <laughs> yeah, I've seen Fab Florinoy do that for many years. What an advantage. Is it though? I'll be focusing on trying to get enough oxygen in. <laughs> <laughs> Let's drive to the basket. Well, Fab was... Uh, one of the best, not only as a player, as a coach, but also as an official out there, making sure they were they were on their uh, on their metal. On social media, they call them influencers. He was an influencer. Yeah. <laughs> and I mean, speaking on that, what uh, we got to give credit to Gareth Murray because for those that's watching, it is a very difficult job to be a player coach, and you see him out here knocking out threes, and like you mentioned, and he's responsible for the scouting report. It's a lot of responsibility. Well, the concern he will have at the minute is that Hillsman and Johnson both on a couple of fouls early in this game. And we talked about they're a little thinner without Green. And Fraser to Malcolm. Murray trying to lead Fraser to the basket but he wasn't heading that way and that was a great defensive stance by the Giants it began with Hudson coming applying pressure on the ball handler and that's a role that he's taken on this year Saunders to Clark oh Saunders was going to set the screen Clark threw him the pass well, just a miscommunication there that we haven't seen so much you know the other end of the floor the rocks i thought i think have been really good in that sense however Giants have got 28 points on the board well, rocks trying to get a couple more here in the last few seconds murray driving in dumps it off to malcolm needs to go up bunyan gets it away but misses everything and a high scoring opening
quarter here in Manchester. The Rocks and the Giants putting points on the board. We've got a 28-24 scoreline here at the end of one. We'll have the second quarter when we return. Welcome back to the National Basketball Performance Center where the Manchester Giants lead the Glasgow Rocks by 28 points to 24. It'll be the Rocks who will get us underway here. A couple other games going on in the league. Newcastle 18, Bristol 24 at the end of the uh, first quarter and they're into the second in the cup semi-final first leg at the Copper Box. Leicester lead London 32-36. Wow. Nice drive through off the glass, not quite, but he gets his own rebound and still can't quite get the roll there, Harris. Really like Harris's energy there. If at first you don't succeed, try and try again, and just the persistence there, the strength and the athleticism to stay with it. Wow, good work. And I love the addition of Harris. He's not the typically the type of player that Gareth would go for. He, he, he likes high IQ guys, but I always say in the BBL, you got to have an X-Factor player like that if you're going to be successful and make a run, as you just seen there, picking up two of his offensive, his own offensive rebounds. Well, a quick substitution with Whelan having picked up his second foul. And Steele comes back for him. Nice shot off the mark. Hillsman with the defensive rebound this time. Harris, sorry, with the defensive rebound this time. Is Malcolm for three? Hudson. Back to Steele for three. Back iron on that one. Murray with the rebound. It's a good look from Steele as well. He stepped into it, had enough time there. Murray had a lot of time. He moved it on to Bunyan instead, who gets the long two to go. Charlie Bunyan just automatic from there. And the Gareth Murray knew where he was. And Bunyan repays him the favor. And if you look at this 
Glasgow lineup. They're going with the Scots with the addition of Harris. And these are minutes that Manchester Giants must win. McKnight penetrating in. Leaves it short, but cleaned up by Marvosa. Well, that's what you want him to do. Is you want to get, get him in the game, be active, press the boards, and nice putback finish there. Harris, nice work of the pick and roll. It's kicked out to Bunyan for three. Well, a rare miss for Johnny. They've been going in more than they've not so far this season. They have 54 percent. It's in incredible numbers. Oh, string on the three for Will Saunders. Speaking of incredible numbers, Saunders likes this fixture and he started the game off hot. And it's great to see him healthy. At my time with him at Newcastle, he never got to show the best version of himself. So great to see him having great success for the Giants this season. Oh, that's a lovely finish from Fraser. It really is. It's just knowing as well where you are, where the rim is, and using your body. Close under pressure is able to get it away to Hudson. Deal poked away by Fraser. Hudson trying to steal it back, just can't quite keep it in play. I do like that energy, you're right Drew, that energy that Hudson brings on the defensive end. He's, he's a guy that he understands that that's his role and needs to, needs to impact the game. Even things like that, when you don't get the ball, it, these anticipation plays, and it just disrupts offenses sometimes. And I like that energy. Yeah, it's those little plays like that that's a trickle effect throughout the team. And so um, you need a guy out there that's willing to sacrifice his body and make those little plays. Here's Jack Gumley fresh into the game, looking to use his strength, trying to back down. Nice head fake, and good finish off the glass. Such a nice move. And Boban Jack Domney, someone who's proven he's a an efficient scorer last season. A little bit of a reduced role this year in his minutes, but as you see, introduced into the game, making good things happen already. Here's Armstrong. Out to McKnight. Shot clock down to five. Armstrong penetrates and gets all the way to the bucket. Tyreek Armstrong's been out of the game for a little bit, but that's taken him to eight points personal, five assists. This guy is starting the game off with MVP numbers. Dynamic. Here's Jeff Gumley. McKnight with the foul. Clumsy one. His first. Substitution for Manchester brings Clark and Anderson back into the game. Hillsman driving hard, dumps it off. And foul is called, that will be two shots. Nice play, good decision here from Hillsman. He pushed a little bit under the basket, couldn't get off the shot himself, but found Frazier Malcolm who was cutting. His cutting was, uh, was perfectly timed there. And if you're a Glasgow Rock fan, you got to be encouraged. Your best player, Jordan Johnson, sitting on the bench there with two fouls, and it's a two-point game. Potential for it to become one. Hillsman, who's also on two fouls, has just recently come back into the game. Be interesting to see how long Gareth Murray leaves it before he brings Johnson back. Here's McKnight. Anderson at the elbow. Trying to get past Jack Domney in. Drawing the foul. That's uh, one of those ones where as well. That's a scouting report play for me. Jamal Anderson's going to his left, his weaker side. You just want to stand up straight. You're the bigger defender. And he there he's, he knows he's put his hand up. My, my fault. But it's little plays like that where you, you, you just got to be locked in and just be disciplined enough to see it out. And we talked earlier at the top of the show about the coaches with this we call the trilogy. Not really wanting to show their hands, but Glasgow throwing out there a 2-2-1 that they ran out that I haven't really seen much this year. It looked like at one point they were in a 1-3-1. So Garrett Murray knows the importance of this game, bringing out all the stops tonight. 
well, in some ways, if you throw out stuff that you don't plan to use in two days, they'll be planning for that, and then they don't they don't see it at all. That's a great point. Here's the shot at the top of the key, a smooth-looking shot as well from Jordan Harris. A lot of his game has looked smooth tonight, Dan. And Ten points personal for him, and he's just been that guy. A nice hands from Bunyan, knocking that out of bounds. And when you're a non-shooter like Harris, how do you get the confidence start knocking those shots down? Getting to the free throw line where he's four for four tonight. Getting to the bucket, getting those little bunnies that fuels you, gives you that confidence. Armstrong with a nice fake to get himself another bucket. Tori Armstrong is, is quietly killing this Rocks team. 12 points, sorry, 10 points for him personally. He's someone who's doing it in a very efficient manner. Oh, Bunyan, the lane opened up for him. He was a little surprised at first. Hillsman driving hard, good finish. That's a really good decision there. He didn't feel comfortable letting that three ball go and instead finds a way all the way to the rim to the finish. Armstrong looking to use his pace to get past Bunyan and doing exactly that. <laughs> He's a one man wrecking machine at the moment. And while Johnson's out of the game, if I'm the Manchester Giants, I'm exploiting that matchup with Bunyan guarding Tyreek Armstrong. Harris. And he gets to the rim, gets his own rebound, recycles out. Jack Domney knows that's off the mark, tries to chase it down. But Clark is first to it. Armstrong. Back to McKnight. To the elbow. Nice shot. It's a good looking play there. And McKnight's looking at someone as well who's, who's feeling pretty good. Takes him to four points personal, but he's coming off the back of a tough game, remember? So all these buckets that go into the scrum add to his confidence. Harris flips the ball out. Good hands to poke that loose. They're a little unlucky there, Manchester. Good work in the first place from McKnight. Good penetration again from JC Hills. We're trying to make something happen. Staying aggressive and attacking the rim. Johnny blocked from behind by Clark. Rocks going to get back to moving that basketball. A lot of dribbling at the moment and trying to individually create. I think that happens as well when Jordan Johnson leaves the floor. Hillsman stepped out of the court there. Timeout is called by the Manchester Giants with 3.53 to go in the first half. They lead this one by five. And ask the question few minutes ago how long does he leave it before he brings Johnson in where, where are you leaning on that bring him back in now save him for another minute or two Drew yeah I would I would see how this next minute goes and if rocks are steady I would just leave him there but if Manchester goes on a little mini run you got to bring him in before this game gets out of hand I think the issue he's got with it is that decision down is the other end of the floor. Tyree Kamstrak at the moment is, is just he's staying aggressive and he's he's scoring the ball. So if Johnson's guarding him, he's just going to have to let him go. And, and Tyree Kamstrak is, is someone already on 12 points. Latest scores from the other two games. I know you're both interested. Uh, two minutes and 42 seconds to go to halftime. Newcastle 28, Bristol 35. 123 to go to halftime in the cup game. London 43, Leicester 52. Wow. I was looking something up the other day on Synergy, and Leicester are 16th in the world in points per game. The interesting thing, and obviously they're playing London tonight, the interesting thing, number one in the world is Saratov, who London play next week in the QB Euro Cup. So they've got, within the space of a couple of days, two of the most efficient scoring teams, obviously playing at different levels, but... Uh, an interesting challenge nonetheless. Well, if you're giving up 50 against Leicester, how much are you going to give up to Saratov? <laughs> well, that's the question. Ooh. Bunyan comes away with it. Harris with a little slip, able to keep the dribble. Great block from Clark. I don't know if Harris needs to change his moldies into studs, but he keeps, he keeps slipping. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's the shiny aqua new 
flooring that Manchester's put on, on display tonight. Well, did they did they overwater the pitch beforehand? <laughs> it looks great. Nice lob. Oh, it hit the rim. Oh, I'm My not sure goodness. what Jack Dumney was throwing that to. Other than the person in the Santa hat on sidelines, I'm not sure. Yeah, that was a very odd decision and an even odder execution there. And this rocks offense now struggling a little bit. They've been on 38 for a little while now. And this is a game where the scoreboard hasn't stayed still for, for very much. And it's a combination of, of, of poor decisions, uh, you know, unmade shots, of course, but not good shots. Well, Gareth Murray has gone to Johnson and to get himself back in the game. He's at the subs table. Oh, Anderson all on his own with the one-handed throwdown. Jamal Anderson, who's been active in this game. Great look there from McKnight. We know Jamal Anderson. He'll be one of the better cutters you'll see in this league. Nice dunk finish. And I said, observe this next minute. Yeah, coach, it's time to get him back in. As you see, Jordan Johnson casually walking back on the floor after sitting down quite a while. Well, if they can get to halftime with he and Hillsman both on two fouls, they'll be pretty pleased, but they'll want to be still within touching distance. Here is Johnson. Johnson calling for the screen, goes the other way, and Armstrong commits the foul. What a match up there. 20 against 11. Armstrong just as quick as his counterpart there Jordan Johnson but not on that occasion and you notice when Jordan Johnson was bringing the ball up the floor it changes how you play when you got two fouls he was reluctant to put on that burst because he knows Tyreek has the foot speed to get in front and draw that charge like a Connor yeah. Washington Hello. Sort of changing on the fly here, Manchester, trying to work out what they're going to go. Armstrong kicks it to Anderson in the corner, and that's a little short. It's a great look, though. Anderson steals it right back, though. Saunders sets himself, and he hits the three. Will Saunders knocks down his third of the game. Wow, what a play. Rocks are in trouble here. They look a little bit tentative and unsure. All the wall, Manchester Giants are growing in confidence. Big two minutes for Glasgow. Got to get themselves back into this game before the half. Jack Dumney's pass is deflected away. Look at Anderson running the floor. Clark sees him, but couldn't quite find him. Johnson. Offensive foul, or is it? His body's all over the place. No, it's Saunders' call for the push. I must admit, I went with the ball. Let's see what happens here. Oh, Saunders just barreled into him. Yeah, that's a good call. This is Anderson. I mean, he's a great defensive player at the best of times, but he's always got his head on the swivel there. He could easily have just ran back and that pass go right past him. But he's turned what was a missed shot into points for his team at the other end. Jamal Anderson always adding value, and that's so hard to do sometimes as well. I remember, you know, when you, uh, look, you know, miss a shot, my mind was always just get back as fast as I can. I wasn't looking around to see what was going on, but Jamal Anderson, as you said, his head's on a swivel. He's always aware, he's always privy to where the ball is and an opportunity to steal the ball. And for me, it's just poor decision making by the Rocks in transition. That's twice now they've gotten a stop, tried to push the ball, and just thrown the ball away. The last time they faced the Giants, they turned the ball over 18 times in which the Giants were able to capitalize for 24 points. So you don't want to give this Giants team easy buckets. You want to make them grind it out in the half court. Particularly a turnover like that where you've got no chance of guarding anybody and you end up a guy who's already uh, Made a couple of nice threes wide open and all day to shoot it Well, it's halftime in the other two games 29 to Newcastle 35 to Bristol in the league and in the cup It is London 48 Leicester 55 There's a long way to go in that game. That is essentially the first quarter because they play the second leg at the Morningside Arena at the end of December.
Dan, what's the mid-mark here for how long the Rocks have been on 38? Well, you're asking me questions now. I'm going to have to look that one up as they get off 38 to go to 39. And it's taken Jordan Johnson to reintroduce himself into the game, and he's only been able to get one of those. 5.21, so it's about four minutes between the scores. Here's Clark with an easy lay-in. That's a long time for a team that averages 90 points a game. Yeah, and the problem is uh, this has been a bit of a scoring race, and when you stop scoring, the other team will keep going, and you'll find yourself 11 down, which they do, although an important shot by Johnson. Really big shot there from Jordan Johnson. Gareth Moore needed to reintroduce him to the game, and he's already rewarding his coach for knocking down that three. Also, it took a little atmosphere out of the crowd. They were right up, and it just suddenly flattened them a bit. Here's McKnight. Lobbing it to Clark. Clark trying to draw the foul, misses the shot. Oh, that's not a great pass. Again, that's one we just talked about, those transitions there. He's got Malcolm wide open. He throws a difficult pass to the center in the open court. It's the wrong decision again. That's nine turnovers now for this Glasgow Rocks team. Just trying to take some time out of this. Giants have ten points off those nine turnovers, by the way. Looking to add to that is Armstrong. Oh, get that out of here. But Clark with the rebound. Saunders again for three. Not this time. Here's Harris. Harris running quickly, draws the foul, basket will count. Wow, great, great, like <laughs> push themselves there. Jordan Harris has taken the ball all by himself, and this is starts from him. A great block there, and I thought the Rocks got a little unfortunate. It did fall to Will Saunders, who, who you know, could knock that shot down, but then the other end of the floor, Jordan Harris has done a superb job of attacking that rim, making things happen. That's 10 points for him. He's very direct in everything he does, isn't he? he? He knows where the ring is and he tends to head straight to it. Some guys sort of weave about it. Johnson's more of a weaver looking for a spot, isn't he? Whereas he's a bit more direct. Last few seconds here. Giants trying to stretch his five point lead. Saunders getting in through not a great pass. Anderson keeps it in, gets it away. But it was always going to be a difficult shot there. Well, a good recovery there from the Glasgow Rocks. For a minute or two, they looked in a little trouble, suddenly found themselves 11 points down, having got stuck on 38, but have scored seven to finish out this half. That's what it was, Dan. And what was the common denominator? Jordan, Jordan Johnson. Johnson. <laughs> and he reintroduces himself to the game, and he, he was the one who hit that free throw to get him off that dreaded 38 points and then hits a big three. But I think what you've got with him, when you've got him on the floor, you've got calm on the offense there. And you've got somebody very comfortable bringing the ball up, even under pressure that we've seen from the uh, Manchester Giants in the first half. Let's take a look at the numbers. Well, nothing to separate them in terms of the shooting percentages from any of the distance. Perhaps the one differential is that is nine turnovers, which we've said already have led to 10 points the other way and that's probably why Je uh, Manchester is shading it and that's been a combination of four decisions and four execution uh, and, and, and active hands from this Manchester Giants team and we've already talked about the bench points from Manchester leading the league another 15 so far well let's get some reaction on that first half uh, Octavius McKnight is with Drew Lasker Dan Clark mentioned you got great flow when you're on the court what's flowing for the Giants in the first half uh, we're just trying to focus on energy, trying to have some flow on the defensive end. That's where we hang our hats at. So we, right now, the focus is energy on defense. So that's what we're trying to do. And you mentioned in the VT that you can coach as well. So put on your coaching hat. What do the Giants need to do in the second half to come out with a win? Um, just stay humble, man. No, coming out is 0-0. We're not thinking about the score. It's 0-0. Let's start like a new game. Let's focus on defense. Let's start it over. Let's go. And I got to address this shower issue. It's mentioned that the Americans are a little bit shy when it comes to showering. Martavius, explain yourself. Every time we went somewhere and they had private showers, I showered every single time. <laughs> every time I get to my apartment, I shower all day, every day. As long as you get it in. Good job, my man. Great Come first on. half. Yes, sir.
Yeah, good first half for the Giants, but this one is wide open. Make no mistake. The Rocks battling back towards the end of that second quarter, arresting the slide. It's a five-point ball game. Analysis and reaction coming next. It is a five-point ball game at the half. Giants 50, Rocks 45. And as that scoreline suggests, two exciting teams putting up offense and keeping things pretty tight. These two face each other three times over the next week. On Sunday, the first leg of the Cup Semi. Wednesday is the second leg. And we'll get into whether they've got one eye on that, whatever their coaches are suggesting. Kieran Achara, pretty even Stevens when you look at the majority of those stats with one notable exception. From a Glasgow Rocks perspective, you know, the turnovers, they had nine turnovers, and they weren't forced turnovers either. You know, they were just silly mistakes, and that, that cost them 10 points. We looked at bench points as well at the top of the show. We'll look at bench points in a moment. 59, the Giants, uh, sorry, 15-6, the Giants lead the Rocks, a nine-point differential there. And you could do the math pretty easily. That is proving to be the big difference right now. It was great energy in that first half. Uh, started a breakneck pace, Kieran. And even though they're going in five points down, I think Gareth Murray would be quite happy with the way the Rocks put the brakes on towards the end of that second quarter. Yeah, for sure. They bounce back at the end. But the Rocks pace right now with a, a depleted team, you know, missing green right now, that's not the speed they want to play at. So I think they need to calm things down a little bit more in, in, in the second half. Drew, the matchup you're looking uh, most forward to is the battle of the guards. And that hasn't disappointed Jordan Johnson and Tyreek Armstrong. We'll see Armstrong first 12 points six assists and he called him explosive and he lived up to that Billy. Yeah we talked about that dynamic explosiveness from Tyreek Armstrong able to get in the paint where he's getting little floaters he as he feeds Jamel there on an alley hoop but this is where he's shown most defensively when he's getting his chest in front of the defenders and able to slide his feet being that pest that he is. Now Jordan Johnson, his numbers don't stack up uh, quite as well on paper, 7 points, 3 assists, but Kieran, how different is this Rocks offense when he's on court? He, he, no, here's the team clicking, I, I, I've seen him in action, 
they're telling people to get to the right spot. There you saw Armstrong making that big stop, you know what I mean? He, he's been disruptive in, in defence. But I, I think Johnson leads that team like, at, from scoring, but also getting them in the spots to make them, their jobs easier as well. Now, speaking of scoring, bench strength was something that we've keyed in on. League leaders, the Manchester Giants, of course, in the BBL, leading comfortably today, as we saw on the match stats. And Will Saunders, who top scored last time these two played, right in the thick of it, Kieran. Yeah, he's doing what he does best. You know, he's shooting the ball. Actually, he made his first shot and he actually gave up an, an open look his second time. But he's finding his rhythm, he's comfortable here, he knows what his job is to do, and he's doing it very, very well. You mentioned the rocks looking at the pace of this game, and of course, looking ahead when they're short stacked. At Sunday, at Wednesday, how do you think Gareth Murray's going to handle minutes for his team in the second half? Yeah, I'm really curious. You know, Gareth played 13 minutes in that first half. He got off to a good start, you know, making some shots. But quickly, again, there were some unprecedented turnovers, a little bit of frustration. I'm really curious to see what he does in the second half. I, I want to see if he actually plays big minutes in the second half or if he takes a back seat and lets Fraser Malcolm do his thing. And true, that's a, a point that is particularly accentuated by the fact that it's so difficult to be coaching and seeing what's going on, the bigger picture of what's going on when you're right in the thick of the action. Yeah, but like we mentioned on, on comms, tonight is a game you can't hold back. This is a must win for both games. A loss, take them both to 500. We'll worry about tomorrow when it comes. Let's get the win tonight and let's do whatever's necessary. And I, I actually don't know if it is. I don't know if it is a must win. Cause for, for me, I, I, I think right now, you know, they put eggs in the basket. I think the cup is so, you know, I think the league is, is gone for, for, from a mindset, from a Glasgow Rocks perspective. The cup is where they want to be at. Both of them want their hands on some silver. So it'll be fascinating to see how each coach deals with the second half and deals with the rotation. Right, it's your favourite time of the week, Kieran Achara. It's the plays of the week. Steal it away. Away out to Johnson. Lobbed up to Shelton. Great fast break from the Newcastle Eagles. And it starts with the Eagles defense there. Brandon Peel doing what he does best. And a great offensive transition execution here. The dunk finish. Rolling to the basket. Shane Walker blocked by Jameson. Huge play off the backboard. Dusha will have to. Oh, my. Dusha from downtown. Top to Delpesh. Delpesh shows the corner all the way to the basket. Malcolm Delpesh throws it down on Legend Robertin. Johnson has it. Gives it to Hendry. Oh, five down with 30. And now every single player has played tonight is on the score sheet. Fletcher's spinning. Fletcher getting all the way. Dishes it off and hammered in by Duke Shelton. Wow, and Ramon Fletcher's got a longer, stronger defender on him, but he uses the screen. Penetrates inside and this is down to a Duncan big. Come on then, hit us with us. Hit, hit us with it, big man. You know how biased I want to be. I thought, you know, Murray Henley's play was, was a good play. But that Ramon Fletcher play in the end, that was just disgusting. I thought you got for the I thought you got for the Duke of Newcastle, no, no, though, the no, Brandon no, Peel. I, I, I love watching you know, Fletcher in action get back to his left hand. That was dish for a disgusting finish. That was definitely the play of the week. Drew, do you agree with that? You're old buddy Fletch. You must agree with that, right? I mean, all those great plays, but the disgusting play of the week is this jumper made, this <laughs> Christmas jumper. <laughs> Jumper. <laughs> top, this is the top point. <laughs> that is hard, but fair. Right, right then, there. we are getting close to the second half tipping off here in Manchester. And it's a decent ball game. We have for you a five-point ball game at the half. Two evenly matched teams as we expected with one eye on the cup. Be fascinated to see how this plays out. Second half, tipping off next.
Welcome back to Manchester. 50-45 Giants lead the Rocks at the half. Second half about to tip off, so let's get right back to Ant and Dan. Thank you very much, Nat. Yes, the two teams just finishing off their uh, half-time team talks. And, uh, well, I suppose the uh, the two coaches will say, go out and start the, the second half the way you started the first half offensively, but let's try and work on the defence a little. Yeah, I think so. And, uh, you know, it was, it was clearly something uh, on the mind of Gareth Murray's was, was, was defence. We need to be better defensively. However, they conceded 50 points uh, in, in that half. So that plan's clearly gone out the window. But what his team need to do is they need to look after the basketball. Those nine turnovers. They've been nine careless turnovers, and it's cost them. I thought for a second that Murray might not be coming out at the start of the second half because he kept his shooter shirt on until the last second. But he is out there, and it is the same starting five that began the game for both teams. He's a man that's played many roles. He's got a couple of different uniforms. <laughs> Here's Armstrong. McKnight, Clark trying to get down in the low post, but no pass there. Armstrong kicks out to steal for three. Long rebound comes all the way out to Anderson. McKnight drives to the basket off the mark. Great rebound. Harris getting up for that one. Excellent help from Hillsman and excellent rebound from Harris. Mid range from Fraser off the glass. Misses. Murray might steal that. Just can't quite keep it in play. There might have been a uh, block warning for this. Wow, well, could have could have went either way. Armstrong cross court to McKnight, and he knocks down the jump shot. He's looked very comfortable with that jump shot. That little shimmy there gets the pull up jump shot in his in rhythm. Murray, the three. Tough shot with Dan Clark diving out at him. Rebound, Fraser. Harris. Oh, somehow he kept the ball. And again. And he's still going at it. Can't get any points, but he's kept it alive for his team. Oh, he just ran out of gas there as well. You can tell he's tired. Block again from Dan Clark. Perfectly timed. He didn't leave the ground, Dan Clark, but he perfectly timed it. Jamal Anderson tries to get it to go down the other end of the floor, and both teams seem to be crashing the boards here. Well, Dan Clark has three blocks in this game. He's barely jumped on any of them. It's all about expert timing. Well, that's what those, what was it, 16, 15, 16 years in the game will get you. Uh, get you those uh, those plays where you don't have to exert too much energy. But uh, look, he's got a significant size difference too. Let's let's not uh, fool ourselves here. When you're six foot eleven, it surely gives you an advantage when you're uh, under the rim there, challenging those shots. Steal from the foul line. Stretches the Giants. Lead out to nine. Here's Johnson. Out to Murray. Fraser at the elbow. Knocks it down. It's a good looking shot there. And they shared the basketball there. And what they did is they made the Giants defense work. That's something they haven't done yet so far. Oh, everything but the finish there for uh, Armstrong. Is uh, Fraser going quick the other way? And that's what Johnson's so good at. Look how easy it was for him to thread that pass. It barely required him to, to think too hard about that one. And Ali Frazier says, thank you very much. Here's Armstrong. Here's Anderson in the corner. Tough shot from Jamel Anderson. That was a tough shot. and That's a shot Jamel Anderson. We know he can make and He makes it at an efficient rate.
Here's a reply three off the back of the iron from Harris. Fraser gets a rebound, but by illegal means. And the foul is called against him. Well, Drew Lasker has joined us once again in the commentary booth. I hesitate to look at the Newcastle score. Well, I hesitate to say it out loud. I showed him, Dan. Oh, did you? Don't tell me the bad news. 33-51. <laughs> I won't ah. tell you which way it is. His steal. Armstrong. Oh, that was almost a really good pass, but it was well read by Johnson. Johnson barreling his way through, somehow gets it to Hillsman for two. Wow, I can't, I'm surprised they didn't call the foul, but look, a positive outcome happened. You know, it's Jordan Johnson just pushing the basketball and even when he kind of doesn't mean to do it, he positively finishes offensive transition. I think he might get an assist for that as well as uh, uh, McKnight replies with the lane. Johnson gets it back. It's nice ball movement. It's a shot that Ali Fraser normally knocks down. You want him to go to his bank shot on that occasion. Though. I think he's a lot more efficient with that one. And nice pass. And I don't think Anderson was coming for the ball. He was coming for the rebound. Driving along the baseline, <laughs> going for the jam there. I think the foul was called before he uh, took off, and it'll be a sideline ball. And I saw that foul coming a mile away from the beginning of that play. Hillsman just out of out of position, and now he picks up his third foul. Low back into Clark. His steal. And he knocks that down. That's the thing that they jumped into the zone a few times like that, and that little 15, 16 foot shot is there if you want to attack it. Well, that's Murray for three, and he hits. Goodness me. He didn't even catch the ball cleanly, but still has the cock and loaded and lets it fly. Foul called. I think it's on Harris for the hold. That'll be his third. Well, when you can shoot like that and barely have to get off the ground, that can extend your career by six or seven years. <laughs> I believe it. I believe it. I sit here envious, <laughs> thinking to myself, what could have been? <laughs> <laughs> well, you were the mid-range king, for I'm, sure. I think I jumped too high. Uh, every, every jump, I, uh, I shortened my, uh, short my career. <laughs> you did give it your all on that jump shot. <laughs> Ball movement from the Giants back out to Claw off the mark. Hillsman with the rebound. Johnson getting all the way, a little strong. Fraser trying to keep it alive, and at the second attempt, gets it home. Unlike that aggressiveness, okay, he doesn't finish the play there, but he knows he's got guys crashing the board, whether it's your center inside or Jordan Harris. Armstrong loses that one out of bounds. They've been striking distance here. You feel that the Giants feel momentum, and then all of a sudden, a couple plays from the Rocks and the right back within striking range here. Here's Murray trying to get them even closer off the mark. Saunders. That came off the foot. Latest score from the Copper Box. London 67, Leicester 88. Wow. wow. Still uh, 11 and a half minutes to go in the first leg, and obviously the second leg at the Morningside Arena. But that is a, uh, well, if they can hang on. It's all right being up 20 in the third quarter. But if they can keep a double-figure lead to go home, that would be a big advantage for Leicester. Indeed, and with that score and a Newcastle score, you can put my weekly picks into flames. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Here's Whelan. Whelan goes all the way and lays it in. That's a really good finish there. Jordan Whelan, I like the way he's aggressive when he attacks that 
rim with that fearless mentality. That's a really difficult finish. Glasgow going to call a timeout here with 3.42 to go in the uh, third quarter, trailing only by five. It's one of those games where whenever Manchester have got the momentum and look like they might pull away, Glasgow have hit a shot or two, made a play or two just to keep themselves in touch. It has been some great timely timeouts by Coach Murray, and that goes for having a feel of the game and actually being out there on the floor. You see the momentum sling in the Giants' way, and he tries to burn it before it can start it up. And I think the, the difference between the start of this half and what the, the first 20 minutes, the Rocks aren't particularly making a lot of shots. I wouldn't say they're a, they're a team in, in great flow right now, but they're not turning the ball over. Nine turnovers at halftime. They're still stuck on nine. And what that does is it doesn't allow the Giants to get those easy points. Well, it was uh, Jordan Whelan there on that fast break to, to lay. And his brother Patrick is having himself a ball game, by the way. I just looked at the stats on that. He is nine of ten for 25 points down at the Copper Box, Patrick Whelan. That is some efficient scoring right there. And maybe that schedule is starting to catch up to the London Lions just a bit. Obviously, they were in Turkey on Wednesday. And they all, uh, a man down in the uh, Jordan Williams not playing at the moment. As I say, still a lot of basketball to be played in that one. Here's Gareth Murray driving hard, going up high. Ball bobbles about to Hillsman, not loose by Hudson. Still the Rocks have it. Oh, and he just throws it in somehow. That's incredible play there. And good energy there from Hillsman and Frazier to keep battling, to keep that ball alive. And if we're playing horse, just give me an H because I'm not making that. <laughs> oh, what a pretty finish that is in transition from Harris. Yes, indeed. Daniel Rollins, and look at that hang time. Michael Jordan-esque. Wow. This Saunders for three, and he strings it. <laughs> Let's not forget about Saunders has had a really good and productive score in half. 14 points now for him. Four of six from behind the all. Harris just willing his way to the basket. Nice pass from Anderson. Saunders trying to circuit one in. He'll shoot two. Oh, let it go. Harris again just hunting that ball down and contesting. Just a little bit too much contact there on the body. And like you mentioned earlier, knowing your scouting report when you were talking about Jamel Anderson going left, same with Will Saunders. If Will Saunders is attacking the basket, I'm just putting two hands up and I'm living with the results. What I don't want is his feet to be set behind a three-point line where he's causing havoc tonight. Four of six from behind the arc. Well, that is his first free throw make of the game. The Giants are perfect. 14 of 14. There's only been one missed free throw in the entire game. That was Jordan Johnson. Johnson is blocked. Great defensive play by McKnight. Here's Whelan. Knocked away by Bunyan and off the leg of Jordan Whelan. Well, contrasting defensive stops there. You get a high fly and block like this from McKnight, and then you get a intelligent slap of the ball off the body play, but they both result in, uh, in stops. Murray. Hillsman out to Fraser. Shot clock down to five, and there's a foul by Hudson. And just something interesting to look for. That last possession there, Dan Clark in the short corner didn't receive the ball from Jordan Whelan as he turned it over off his knee. And I saw the frustration on Dan Clark's face of not getting the ball. Johnson 
Back to Fraser. He's going to try his luck from three-point range, and he doesn't have much luck as it rings out. Yeah, tough one there, and rolled in and out. And Frazier, we know he can hit that shot. His Saunders, not this time. Ooh, that pass only just got there. Oh, they've tried to turn it over several times there, the Rocks, and eventually they do fire an offensive foul. It was one of those ones that was just destined for a disaster, the offense. And a turnover by the but in the form of an offensive foul. Minute to go here in the third. Giants still lead this by eight. They had a five point lead at halftime. Here's McKnight trying to stretch it and doing so from behind the arc. Good just lead, big play there. McKnight has 11 points, but it feels to me like he's got a lot more. And quickly down court, Ali Fraser with the lay in. And McKnight has been one of those guys, I think they've got the ball in his hand you know, during periods of the game where. The balance. That's an offensive foul on Clark. That basket won't count for McKnight. And a technical foul, I think, on Dan Clark. We're waiting to get confirmation. It is definitely a blocking foul for Clark for this screen here, using the arms rather than the body. And it is a technical foul on Dan Clark as well for something he said afterwards. And that technical foul wasn't just Ooh, a reflection. He's got to watch himself here. He's still going at it, Clark. Well, we forget as well that Giants don't have Artisan. Today. He's just got another one, I think, did he? Oh, no, it's a coach technical. It's a coach technical. It's on Lloyd Gardner. But like I was saying, that wasn't a reflection of that last play. That was frustration bubbling over from previous plays of not receiving the ball when he's in good position. Johnny Bunyan will shoot two from the foul line because of the two technicals. Giants have de uh, depleted that position. Their, their import player, Artisan, not here this evening. And he's someone again at a 6 8, active athletic body that provides them with size inside. Lewis as well uh, out for the Giants as well. So, a couple of free points for the Rocks to cut the gap down to seven. They get the ball back because of the offensive foul and we're into the last 30 seconds here of the third quarter there's going to be another foul on Hudson for the hold remarkably despite having three fouls in quick succession that's only the fourth of the quarter on the Giants so it is still a sideline ball Here's Hildman getting all the way to the basket, too strong off the glass. Last shot here for the Giants here in the third. McKnight takes it from the top of the key, back iron, Murray with the rebound. Johnson from half court, ooh, not too far away. Well, the Giants ended up winning that quarter by a basket, but you feel like the Rocks have a little momentum to take into the fourth quarter. It's a seven-point game here in Manchester. Can the Rocks come back or will the Giants hang on? Find out after this break.
Welcome back to Manchester, where the Giants lead the Rocks by seven. But it is Glasgow who will get us underway here in the fourth quarter. Johnson brings it forward. Fraser out to Johnson for three. Rims out, but Hillsman recycles Bunyan off the mark for the three. Suddenly saw Will Saunders diving out at him. Yeah, throws was a little bit of a panic shot there from Bunyan and Owen. He gets the McKnight to create a turnover here, and Rocks will get another stab at it. I felt like it's a really big play that that first one out of the, the quarter weren't able to convert. And if you remember, at the end of the quarter, JC Hillsman misses that layup too. So there's a couple of instances now where Rocks have been given those opportunities to close the gap and haven't been able to capitalize. It could be a two point game if those two shots go in. Definitely a game of margins. Here's Murray. Shot clock getting low. Hillsman throws it up off the mark. Barbosa with the rebound. Technical foul, I assume, on Hillsman, is it? Yes, it is. He was running back and he was running near the official, and obviously the language he used was not what the official was prepared to take. It's his fourth personal foul. So that's two of them now on four, because Harris is also there. And just a young mistake there from Hillsman. He was mouthing at the refs the whole time. He thought that was a foul, but the way this game has been flowing, the refs have, have allowed it to be physical. These teams have matched up against each other four times. This is what you see. Team, both teams getting chippy, bodies flying all over the place. This is BBL basketball. Well, if it's chippy now, what's it going to be like late in the game in the four on uh, Wednesday? And they played three times in less than a week. Here's Hudson. Foul court off the ball. Is that on Johnson or is it on Fraser? It's on Fraser. It's his third. And this game has took that 180 turn. End of the first quarter, we were sitting at a 28 to 24 game, yeah. and you think, goodness me, that, that both teams are going to comfortably, comfortably break the 100 barrier, but now we're looking at averages below their 90 per game each. Now, would you say that both teams have stepped it up defensively, or are they just missing shots? I think it's been a combination of both for me, but the, the intensity has increased. I, I, what I have seen is I've seen an intensity, you know, increasing of intensity there, which, which naturally makes it harder to score the basketball. Because you're expending more energy on the defensive end, but you're also contesting shots. Johnson for three, off the mark. Tipped by Noak Boto, but out of bounds. Johnson trying to make something happen. They need something to happen right now with eight and a half to play, down nine. And I wonder how much of Johnson sitting that stretch in the second quarter is thrown off his rhythm. He plays, he's top five in minutes in the BBL this season. Stolen away by Hudson, who takes it right at them. Foul is called. I think it's on Johnson. It's his third personal. Great work at the defensive end, first of all, by Hudson. Excellent by Jack Hudson and Drew, you can't on the straight of the game. He has evolved himself into that defensive, uh, uh, you know, disruptor if you want, if you if you want to call it that way. But that's a huge play there from Hudson. And you look at this Giants team. I mean, they're a deep roster, one of the deep rosters in the league. And being a professional, you look at that team and you're like, okay, how am I going to yes. get minutes? Yes. Play hard, play defense. That's how you earn the coach, the, the, the coach's trust, and that's how you get yourself on the floor with a talent roster. And not all players can do that. You know, the other player assault can sit at the end of the bench and oh, there's a whole other season that gone by and a missed opportunity. But that's a guy that's you're right. He's found a niche or, or, or an area where he could add value. And it's just a lesson to young players out there that this game is more than just scoring. There's so many other roles that you could take on and have yourself a long career. Giants get the ball back from the end line. Mark Boso gives it to Hudson, who, oh, he got it stuck under the rim. And that's going to be a foul on Murray. Good work, though, from the two younger British kids. 
And Gareth Murray, smart foul there. Not allowing Mark Bunsu to get the ball up. It's like the older British kid. <laughs> it's slightly older. <laughs> but still extremely effective. <laughs> You see the rocks here and foul tr in the penalty with eight minutes to go. And, and the Giants are doing this with three of their starters sitting on the bench. Makes you wonder, is this game starting to slip away from the Glasgow Rocks? Well, one game that is starting to slip is Leicester's lead. It's down to 10 at the Copper Box. Those are always the points that you think, well, actually, if you if you said 10 before the game, they'd have taken that. But when you get up 20, well, there's still three minutes to go in that one. Here's Jack Jomney driving hard and finishing well. That's tough. Good body control, good strength, and a nice finish. Here's Hudson. That's an offensive foul. Illegal screen. Mark Boso. We see this a lot, don't we, with the inexperienced big man in this league. You have to be disciplined, you have to just stand, get, find your position first and foremost, but stand strong, stand still, and you won't get called offensive foul. Murray, back to Johnson. Johnson turns the corner, dishes it off. Good block, but Jack Dominic's trying to clean it up. They still have it, the Rocks, in at the third attempt. It's in from Malcolm. Wow, Fraser Malcolm, really good activity and positivity to stay with it as well. He gets blocked originally, but stays with it and gets his reward. McKnight driving hard under pressure. Wagboso on the rebound. Wagboso's energy getting him some hard earned minutes this evening, and he's He's prospering. Well, it's almost another steal from Hudson, but the foul is going to be called against him. Jack Hudson's a pest, isn't he? I love those plays with no fouls in a quarter. Why not? Take a risk, gamble, see what you can get. As he's proven all game. That looked like great defense to me. Ten-point game, seven to play. Ooh. Almost turned it over late in the shot clock here. Johnson needs to be quick. Murray for three. Off the mark. Rebound pulled in by Jack Domney. Malcolm. Down to, well, stolen away by Mark Boso. Armstrong, he's got a mismatch here. And he kicked that off. He should have really thrown that up. Well, they're over the limit anyway. It's going to be two free throws. It doesn't matter. This is a really tough match up there for Jack Tomley. Should be two shots here. They're lining up for sideline, but they're over the limit. Because well, they... he passed it off, the referees originally said, well, you, you passed it, so it'll be an end-line ball, but then clocked the little cone on the table. Armstrong at the line. And you look at both teams... It's both sitting on 13 turnovers, but it feels like Glasgow Rocks have had a lot more. And I, I agree. Think, yeah. I, I think coming out of this game is very evident that if Jordan Johnson doesn't have the ball in his hands, you will live with these other guys making decisions because they've picked up most of the bulk of these turnovers tonight. Poked away by Anderson. Defense! 
Johnson. Down to Fraser. Time ticking down on the offense. Goes to the spin, scooped it up. And there's a foul on the rebound. Who's it on? Number one, which is J.C. Hillsman, and he... Oh, no, sorry. Thought, thought she signaled one there. It is J.C. Hillsman. They then lined up. It is J.C. Hillsman. He is fouled out of the game. Oh, and he's going to get a technical on the way out, is he? No. He said something, and the referee Very close picked down. that whistle up like yeah. it was coming, but... He avoided that. It will be two free throws because of that foul at the other end. And what's been odd as well, I think, what's maybe been missing from the Rocks' offense is, is Jordan Harris. I think he has been that consistent, bright spark that they've had. And he's won a period of this game here with being on the bench. And I would, I, me personally, I would like to, to, to ride his positivity as much as I could because he has been that that producer for, for this Rocks team this evening. But I think Gareth was probably trying to save him as he's sitting on four fouls himself. But like you said, I'd roll the dice. Here is Harris. Murray for three. A little sure. You feel the Giants can throw the knockout punch here but they're not they're, they're sort of flirting with it but for whatever reason they just they're up 12 which is not bad at all but they you know you, you feel that they could should be up by 20. foul is caught off the ball on ali fraser so it'll be two more free throws well you, you mentioned that and, and that's the dna of a championship team when they get a team on the ropes they throw out that knockout punch it's been several opportunities tonight where it looked like the giants was going to pull out and then all of a sudden the rocks creep back up in the game if the giants want to be contenders these this season these are moments where they have to put this game to bed Clark stretches the lead out to 14. Here's Harris driving through, and I think that's a reach on Armstrong. It's becoming a free throw shooting contest here. Oh, this certainly isn't the first quarter we no, were watching, it gentlemen. It isn't. First quarter, free flowing, fast up and down, zero, like very little fouls. The thing is, there's a, a good amount of time. It's five minutes left yeah. in this game, and Rocks get a couple of stops and hit a couple of makes, and they're right back in it again. And... One or two from the line. Clark playing point guard. Anderson going for the block. He's denied by Malcolm. Wow, what a block too. Here's Johnson finishing top. Off the glass. Once a foul doesn't come his way, but he does get two. And he does force a timeout from the Manchester Giants. Goodness me, what a block there from... Malcolm Fraser, and as we see it time and time again, Jordan Johnson in the open floor. Route one straight to the rim. While well, Lloyd Gardner turned straight to the table on that make and said, I need a timeout here. He's still up 11 with four and a half to go, but he's starting to sense maybe just one or two uh, momentum plays going the Rocks' way. This should be a 20 point game, shouldn't it? Yeah. Giants, Giants could have easily closed this out three minutes ago two three minutes ago but instead it was funnily enough too after the, the technical foul on dan clark it was it was actually worked in the favor of manchester giants the, the rocks you know really struggled to get in their offense struggled to to execute but the, the giants have sort of not not been that that execution 
to, to, to that to that uh, the killer. You know, yeah. that killer. They haven't had it. They haven't had it. And these last four and thirty. Uh, four minutes and 35 seconds are crucial. You talk about the trilogy coming up, the Cup semifinals. Right now, the Giants can send a message psychologically to the G Glasgow Rocks in those upcoming games. But what you don't want to do is give this team a little bit of confidence rolling into those two games. For sure. And it will be a bit of full court pressure here from Glasgow coming out of the timeout. Dealt with relatively straightforwardly by Manchester. Armstrong out to Anderson thought about the three put it on the floor instead and takes the two Smart play there. I think Giants just needed a score not necessarily a three and Jamel Anderson again takes the intelligent play Johnson Moved on to Malcolm in the corner. His three is a little short part with the rebound His 12th of the game McKnight can't convert Malcolm's gone couldn't quite get in the pass. Steele's going to return to the ball game for the Manchester Giants. McKnight sits down. Will be in the front court. Oh, that would have been a great pass to uh, referee Unsworth. Not sure why he didn't catch and shoot that. <laughs> he wasn't ready, Dad. He wasn't ready. <laughs> the breakdown there. It, <laughs> it looks like a bad pass on Jordan jo Johnson there, but I, I think it was actually Jordan Harris who relocated. And uh, created that, that course for that turnover. Foul called on Johnson in the paint with the hold. His fourth. All sorts of foul trouble now for the Rocks. One guy gone, three more on four. Johnson is fouled by Armstrong. The Giants have none of the foul trouble, partly because they've got more players to spread them through. Well, pass was a little uh, of a stretch there for Johnson. Here's Murray. Get to the finger on nice finish. I squeezed that one through and nice power to be able to get that one over the defender. And it's a lot of contact on both ends. I'm looking forward to game two on Sunday between both of these teams. His clock for three. Johnson with the rebound. Johnson driving very directly to the hole to draw the foul. He will shoot. Two more free throws. A lot of free throws in this game. They've been very accurate from it. That continues. Bunyan going to return. Still down 11, Glasgow. Only three minutes to play. Anderson. 
base for Armstrong. He's got the mismatch. He takes the three. Halfway down, Murray with the rebound. Johnson. Ooh. Rebound by Fraser. Stolen away by Anderson. And he feeds it forward to Saunders. Put the lane. Great play from Jamel Anderson. Really good that. I thought he lost the handle. And I thought he maybe waited a little bit too long, but he was able to get that pass through. Well, just drifting away now from the Glasgow Rocks. With two minutes to play, they trail by 13. Oh, it's thrown straight to Murray. Here's Johnson. Oh, Johnson with the offensive foul and elbow to the face of Armstrong, and that will be his game over. His fifth personal foul. Straight in there, Jordan Johnson, just trying to make something happen for his team. He's been that pusher there. It couldn't quite turn it on enough in this fourth quarter. To lead the game with 11 points and seven, re uh, seven assists, excuse me. Well, an offensive foul means it won't be shot to be sidelined. It's finished at the copper box. Leicester have won, but only just. London 96, Leicester 99. Leicester led by as many as 23 points in that game, but they will take only a three-point lead to the second leg. Great fourth quarter by the London Lions. As Harris drives down the lane and flushes it. Wow. Harris getting above the rim again and... Finishing that play. Bunyan with the foul, and it'll be two more free throws. Strong trying to see them home here. Of course, points difference doesn't really matter today. It will do when they meet in Glasgow on Sunday. Bunyan for three. Way short, misses everything. Well, it hasn't been his night from out there, is it? Zero for three from the beyond the three point line. Not his usual self, but again, coming back from injury, you don't know how much that's plaguing his shooting ability. Armstrong getting in, and nice finish, too. Goodness me, that's tough, isn't it? The quick first step crossover and Benada. Jump mid air and nice left hand finish. And the turnover. Saunders. Now Steele. Steele attacking the basket. No way through. Here's Henry driving to the basket, laying it in. Wow, we saw Henry in the top 10 plays of the week last week. I thought for a second there he's going to number one. <laughs> he is an incredible dunker of the basketball. Saunders to Clark, moves it on. Armstrong with the floater, good. Wow, it's tough, isn't it? Tyreek Armstrong, just like that, 21 points, lead no scorers, and with that, nine assists. Well, the shot clock is still on, but there's not enough time for the Glasgow Rocks. They're going to be beaten here, and they're going to turn it over, and Manchester Giants are going to get the win and to be fair they've won all four quarters of this basketball game they've just had a little bit more than the rocks today yeah agreed the only criticism that i could have of the giants is they didn't kill the game soon enough but other than that they've, they've been a team that's been in control they've looked better on both ends of the floor and as a result it's a relatively comfortable 15 point lead in the uh, 15 point win in the end
And uh, you've been in this situation before where you play a team that you know you're playing in a, in a big cup semi-final coming up, maybe not two days later, but what does it do psychologically for the Giants, psychologically for the Rocks looking forward to that? It's a tough one, Dan, because obviously the Giants are going to get confident from this, just know that they can they can beat the, the, this team, but uh, the Rocks, what it should do, it should add fuel to the fire. They're back up in Scotland now on Sunday. That should be all the motivation they need. So, look, it can go either way, but for me personally, it has to work in the favour of the, of, the, of the Rocks going into Sunday. Well, a good performance from the Manchester Giants. Uh, once again, a lot of different contributors uh, on their roster. Armstrong, 21 points, 9 assists, 18 points and great shooting from Will uh, Saunders, a double-double for Dan Clark, Jamal Anderson, 11 points, 7 assists, 4 assists, a lot of contribution, but we see this most weeks with this Manchester team. Yeah, they lead the league in bench scoring, and, and that's why, because they've got a number of different weapons, but they played team basketball as well. You've got, as you said, Dan, you've listed a, a, some really good basketball players that have been able to contribute in different ways, and this makes this team really difficult to stop. 94 points again on the board. This is a team that averages 90 points a game. Well, the Manchester Giants have beaten the Glasgow Rocks 94 to 79. Let's go back down courtside to now. So, 15 point margin, Kieran Achari. Is that a fair scoreline based on what you've seen? You know what? I, I thought the game was over, at, at, you know, at the start of the third quarter, but then the Rocks just kept coming back, kept coming back, kept coming back. But yeah, they were just a little bit depleted right now. You know, the, 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 off the bench, Manchester had that such, so much firepower. Rocks didn't have that tonight. Missing green it made a big, big difference to the game. All right. Uh, speaking of that firepower, let's check in with tonight's MVP. Tariq Armstrong is caught side with Drew. Tariq, what a win. What a team performance. Right. How were you guys able to bounce back from Sunday? Uh, just coming out here feeling like it's kind of a must win. Uh, making sure we bring our energy. And that's what happened. And you had a great stat line tonight. 21 points, 9 assists. How were you able to put your stamp on tonight's game? Uh, like I just said, just coming out and playing hard and leaving the rest up to God, bringing the energy that my team expects from me. And finally, Will Saunders, a big spark for you guys tonight. Talk about this importance to the team. Well, I always tell him, all we need is five threes, and that's going to open the game up from him. I always try to make sure that he stands shooting, staying confident, and shooting the ball. Even if he's not open, I expect him to shoot it. Great win. To go in. Great win. Thanks for your time, Tyreek. Thank you. Uh, my bad boy. What a performance from Tyreek Armstrong. 21 points, 9 assists, just shy of a double-double. And Kieran Achari, he loves playing on Sky Sports because last time we saw him, he was MVP then. Yeah, and changing the game in different ways. You know, today, taking big charges, you know, get, being a disruptor, but also being that facilitator and scoring when he needed to score. And I think that's, that shows his versatility as a player. It certainly does. And I think we described him as tenacious. We described his energy. We saw that first hand today how do you feel he lifts up the players around him and sets the tone and the pace i just I, he's just so quick you know I, I saw that last play there crossover straight to the bucket you know he's got a little, little, little floater game i think he's such a you know influence on offense that opens it up for everybody else because everyone has to focus on him because he can get to the basket at will but with his size you know he's a smart player he knows he can't finish above everybody all the time so finding those little pocket passes and making everyone's job a little bit easier in terms of the psychological advantage this could give the Giants, because we've talked back and forth about that a little bit, we're concentrating on the game in front of us, it's not going to have any bearing on the semi-final first leg on Sunday or indeed the second leg on Wednesday, but it's got to a little bit, doesn't it? You know what, I, I, I always feel that as a player, you know, the first thing the coach will be saying is, right, okay, that game's over with, don't think we're this or that, that, if we don't perform and don't do this, don't do that, but the other team is thinking, we need to get back in here, we need to get back in here, we never showed the true version of ourselves. Well, the other team's thinking that is the best, their best punch. So I think the psychological game in that is, is essentially saying, look, we know what we can do, correct the mistakes and keep going. And all these, both teams have to do that to, in order to be successful these next couple of games. All right, it's going to be a fascinating five days, isn't it? Let's check in with the Giants winning coach Lloyd Gardner. He's with Drew. Coach, what a win. Put you guys at five and three. Talk about that team performance tonight. Um, yeah, really pleasing. Um, I think you can come back. You know, ask me about defensive consistency. That's twice. Um, I think in front of Sky Sports, we've, we've played pretty well on defense. Um, you know, it was a big key 
before the game and, and I thought, you know, outside of the first quarter, I thought we were a little bit flat in that first five minutes or so. But apart from that, yeah, really pleasing defensive performance and we have confidence in our offense. So, yeah, pleased. Well, speaking of defense, and you talked about it at the beginning, you guys were at giving up 93 points per game. You give up 79. What was the difference in those last three quarters? Um, I think the, the key things that I'll have to check the stats, to be honest, but, you know, the key for us, transition points, points in the paint. I'd be interested to see those. I thought we did a pretty good job. Um, I thought offensively we were more aggressive than we had been, and I, I felt that kind of played to our advantage. We got them in foul trouble, you know, and that was our offense as much as anything else you know we we emphasize trying to be aggressive and, and yeah we did a really good job with that and you guys got the number one bench you get 29 points from those guys tonight talk about their importance to this team I, I think we're a team you know whether it's guys that start whether it's guys that come come off the bench everybody has equal value for us um and you look at a guy like like Kingsley today, um, I thought second half, his energy was really infectious for everybody. So he's a guy that, you know, wants to play more, like, and, and rightly so. Uh, he did a tremendous job today. Um, just bringing energy, bringing a bit of physicality on the inside, you know, rebounded it pretty well when he was out there. So I think someone like him sums up our team, really. You know, he's sacrificed for the, for the greater good, but he's ready to go. And, yeah, today he put in a good performance. A great win, Coach. Thanks for your time. That's great. Thank you. Yeah, there's very much a sense of, of team cohesion. We, we touched on it at the top, didn't we? And we've seen that strength in depth and the bench strength once again stepping up. But the selflessness that Coach was alluding to there as well, all of these factors seem to, to create a very strong identity for the Giants. Yeah, and that, that identity is the key word because I think people, when they understand their roles, it allows the team identity. So I think players know exactly what, what is asked of them and they just have to go and deliver that every single night and that's when they're going to be competitive. Let's talk about Dan Clark, Team GB. B skipper, of course, the, the biggest signing into the BBL uh, this season. Double-double for Dan. What do you make of his all-round performance tonight? The thing that amazes me about Dan is it's just so effortless. You know, he doesn't really force anything. You know, there, there's some players out there who are getting guarded a certain way. They, they keep trying to force the issue. Dan just lets it come to him. You know, he, he's a smart player defensively. We saw there making plays defensively, not jumping Kind of, his timing was impeccable. I think that just shows that he is a true vet to this game. Yeah, a tough night for Gareth Murray and the Glasgow Rocks. Uh, the losing coach this evening is also caught side with you. Coach, tough loss tonight. Drop you guys down to 500. Disappointed? Uh, yeah, pretty much. Uh, I thought it was a game we had a chance to win at certain points and we didn't capitalise. It's difficult to win the game when you have 18 turnovers. Not, not our characteristic. We shoot 20% from three as well. But uh, the biggest concern was they're giving up 30 free throws. I mean, we're trying to play physical defense and we're getting tic tac fouls, but we're just trying to we're trying to work on things and we're trying to be better. And speaking of fouls, Hillsman and Johnson got in foul trouble early. You feel yeah. like that affected your flow throughout yeah. the game? Yeah, a little bit. It affected us, but we we've, we've got other guys that can come in and play. So we've got guys that can can score, but we got to play defense. We give up too many fouls and too many turnovers. And you see this game, you see this team again on Sunday in the Cup semifinal. Talk about what needs to be addressed if you guys are going to advance to the Cup Finals. We uh, we did a different, few different things tonight to see how we will play on uh, on Sunday and Wednesday. So, um, but it's our defense. We got to we got to stop certain guys. Uh, we let guys get to their, their strengths. It's a bit about personnel. Uh, but offense, we we got to share the ball a little bit. We'll have 17 t uh, assists tonight, which is not a is not a uh, characteristic for us. Tough loss, coach. Thanks for your time. Thank you. Yeah, great question from Drew there. And it's an interesting point that he made at the top of the show when I asked him, how do players and coaches view a run like this where you've got a big semi-final and he pointed out the distinction between how the two of them would look at that? His hand was forced, Gareth's hand was forced a little bit tonight, of course, because of injury and he had to play more minutes on the court. But do you think there was an element of that, that he was feeding things out, maybe even holding certain things back ahead of the semi-finals? Definitely. You know, it's experimenting. What worked well, what didn't work well, what can we add? And obviously, they were missing two, two of their assistant coaches tonight, which is a big blow. Like, a lot of, a lot of uh, people don't focus on the, the, the things that are happening on the sidelines. That's a lot of in intelligence coming coming getting fueled into Gareth there. So I think they've got a lot to work from, but uh, you're right. They, they, they did experiment a few times, I think, and there's a couple of things I saw that I I expect them to bring on Sunday. And that point of the, the assistant coach not being here, even more so than any other team, I guess, with Gareth Murray as player coach. Very, yeah, you're, you're right. He's had you know, had those, those voices in his ear when he's been on the court, been able to kind of hold the ship. And tonight, uh, he, obviously, wasn't able to do that. Brightest spark for Gareth and the Rocks, Jordan Harris. 18 points, 8 rebounds. He was the standout player for them tonight, Kieran, wasn't he? Yeah, and, you know, he is... 
a, a absolute relentless player. You know, he, he just finds a way to get the job done. You know, he's so consistent from two two point field goal. Doesn't shoot the three uh, particularly well, but he still finds a way to the basket. And a, a great a great positive tonight for the Glasgow Rocks. Uh, speaking of positives, Drew Lasker back with us now. So Jordan Harris, a, a bright spot for Glasgow. Any other positives you think that Gareth Murray can take from tonight's performance? I think that they know that this Manchester team is beatable. You know, they're going to play them over eight quarters. And I think this is a game that could have easily got out of hand, but they stuck in there with their main guys in foul trouble. So the Rock should walk out of here with a little bit of confidence tonight. Slightly deceptive scoreline, do you think? 15-point margin? Yeah, if, if, if it was weird because it felt like it was a 20-point game, but every time you looked up, it was an eight- or nine-point game, and, and Glasgow showed a lot of grit by sticking with it for four quarters. Mm. Okay, uh, we've seen our MVP, we've seen the bright spark uh, for the Glasgow Rocks. What about our play of the day? Well, congratulations to Jamel Anderson for this little beauty, Kieran Achara. Yeah, what I loved about this was Armstrong just pushing the agenda. And we kind of talked about it. You know, Jamel Anderson, he's cutting, he's really efficient, gets to the basket for an easy two. And that's, like I said, it's reminiscent of my days. As, uh, <laughs> Which part? <laughs> oh, <laughs> cheering on the bench. <laughs> <laughs> We're expecting to see that, I'm sure, next week uh, in our plays of the week. Certainly could be on the shortlist. Right, let's check in next. Something we do each and every week here on the BBL are sounds of the game where we mic up one of the players out there on the court and it's a good of this week JC Hillsman let's check it out stay low I got two oh no way hey, chill out on me bro chill out you can't play defense bro come on bro come on bro hey Harris watch behind you Harris watch behind you Harris Hey, get out, get out, JJ, get out! 23, 23, 23! I'm help! I got help, G! Stay up, stay up! Come on, bro, call the game right! Damn! Baseline! Overload! Overload! What are y'all looking at? Hey. Yo! He's out! He's out of bounds! No way. Is she gonna take me up? Take me up. Yeah, we figured he'd be an energetic subject uh, and didn't disappoint. Fantastic stuff from JC Hillsman. Right, tonight's results. Uh, the Newcastle Eagles, Drew Lasker, look away now. Wow. Disappointing. Low scoring affair as well, going down 73-55 to, to Bristol. Man, it just, after that great weekend last weekend, was feeling good, and then you come drop an egg like this, very disappointing. Yeah, indeed, and you might have seen at the bottom there as well, the Leicester ride is eking out a win over the Lions, eking being the operative word, because at one stage they were in complete control of that game. Okay. Definitely, and wondering if I see that as a win, you know, that's, that's right. a nice bounce. Reminds me a lot of the playoffs last year. And the set and Drew Lasker was playing in. <laughs> oh, <laughs> we didn't see memories. the footage, but we stuck it in. <laughs> stuck in a verbal reference. Speaking of the Newcastle Eagles, we are back uh, in action next week, of course, in Leicester for the visit of the Eagles. The champions taking on the playoff winners. 7 p.m. on a 7.30 tip-off to BBL heavyweights slugging it out for Christmas. Well, it's been a fascinating game here in Manchester, particularly given the context of these two teams. We will know when we're on air uh, for our next game which one of the Glasgow Rocks and the Manchester Giants will be in the BBL final. Whether this was a dress rehearsal, as Drew suggested earlier on, we shall see. The Giants nicked it tonight. Will the Rocks have the last laugh in the cup? We'll find out then. Many thanks to Drew and Kieran. Hope you've enjoyed, and we'll see you Friday for the Eagles Riders. See you then.